Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Good morning, Oakwood. It's Wednesday, the 15th of July, and today we find ourselves in Psalm 96, which is a beautiful and iconic psalm, which places God in his rightful place, as sovereign over his creation, ruling the universe in goodness and fairness. But as we go into today's devotion, I want to ask a question. You know, it's okay, we're all friends here, so I think we can be real with each other. But do you ever read scripture and think that what you're reading doesn't quite match up with the world that you see every time you go out your front door? Does it really seem like God is in charge of anything? Well, maybe in eternity for sure, but not in the everyday here and now. I mean, take a look around. Whatever your opinion about the virus, or Brexit, or the economy, Black Lives Matter, or the re-election of Donald Trump. You've got to realise that as a species, we've entered a time of great uncertainty. An uncertainty which most of us have never really experienced before. Here in the UK, and probably most of the Western world, we have lived with a certainty and an expectation that we would um, have a relatively comfortable standard of living. Even if you're unemployed and living on universal credit, you're still richer than two thirds of the population of the planet. Our society has evolved to provide for even the weakest and least able to survive. That is where we've got to after seven decades of peace, prosperity and progress. Now, do you know what philosophers and sociologists are calling the period that the West entered into following the end of World War II? The Great Sleep. I mean, as far as the Western democratic civilised world is concerned, by 1970, we had vanquished the great enemies of fascism and communism, established the free market, driven great systems of technological innovation, put a human being on the moon, overcome disease and ushered in unbelievable advances in modern medicine. By harnessing the power of reason, the scientific method and leaving behind the bedtime stories of the Judeo-Christian religion, we established the new world order where humanity was on a trajectory to ascend to the heaven above the stars of God. We enthroned ourselves on high. We sat on the Mount of Assembly in the far reaches of the north. We ascended above the heights of the clouds. Humanity had not become like the Most High. We had become the Most High. We accomplished all these things without the bearded old man in the sky. And so therefore we decided that in the absence of God, we must be all powerful but we have been living in a dream especially us in the western church we haven't had to suffer for our faith in centuries for many of us it has been a completely safe and sanitized experience we enjoy a middle class life with very little need to rely on god for anything because the free market our employers our investments and pension schemes have always provided for us. Now, I'm not denying the sincerity of your faith in Jesus, but we've all been living in a society where our faith is never really tested, not in the way the scriptures portray the experience of the early church. As we've been journeying through the book of Acts this year, as Simon has so wonderfully unpacked the scriptures describing the birth of the church, hasn't it caused you to wonder why they lived in such a constant and visceral experience of God's power and provision? You know, for my entire life, all I have ever really known is the fantasy world that humanity established in the absence of God, believing that this world is real and that it was unshakable. But in 2007, the shockwaves began slowly at first. The commodities markets began to fluctuate as the housing bubble that had been generated to underpin the bonds market began to burst. And then suddenly financial Armageddon was unleashed upon the earth as every stock market around the globe crashed. And suddenly the illusion of perpetual growth evaporated, leaving the governments of the civilized world scrambling to prevent the world economy from collapsing. The world began to shake and then one by one, every one of the institutions that we rely upon to support our standard of living was exposed for what they truly are, temporary and fragile. Over the course of the next decade, we have seen our entire existence shaken to the core. 
our place in the European Union changed forever. Now I know some of you will see this as a good thing, that in some way that it will leave us in a better position as a nation, sovereign over our direction and future. But did any one of the political or civic leaders who were involved in that process speak about a world where God is sovereign? Now I don't care if you leave or remain because ultimately the only union that is going to bring about true peace and progress on this planet is the union between God and man. The time has come for us to awaken from this great sleep. It's time to take the red pill, leave the matrix and declare among the nations that the Lord reigns, not the human race. The world order we established is crumbling. It was always an illusion because it is the Lord who reigns. He established the world and it is the world that he established that shall never be moved. We didn't create this world. We just hijacked it for a while and we dared to enthrone ourselves in his place. But nothing can stand against the Lord. In Malachi 3 verse 2, it says, Who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. We could never successfully remove the truth of God. And those who tried are going to have some explaining to do on the day of his coming. Paul writes in Romans 1, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. The signature of God, the handwriting of God, is written on every snowflake, on the peak of every mountain, on the depths of the seabed. If we don't recognise the truth of who he is and praise and glorify his name, then creation itself will Jesus said in Luke 19 verse 40, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. So come, my sisters and brothers in Christ, awake, awake, put on strength, O Zion, put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Shake yourself from the dust and arise. Be seated, O Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. The time has come for the world to see the truth and know the goodness of our God, the greatness of our God and the glory of our God. So let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the earth in righteousness and the people in fairness. We look forward to the day that you come. But until then, we remain in the truth that you have established the world, O oh Lord, and it can never be shaken. Amen.